and now we're going to dig in. We've heard this metaphor, the retailer roller coaster, which I just think is a great way to describe what our lives have been like for the last many, many months. And despite Simon's optimism, um, they're going to continue to be a roller coaster for the coming months. I wish, um, I wish this would be over and we could move on, but this is the world we're in, and we're going to talk about how do we inspire shoppers within this world. A few days ago, a few days ago, um, Jennifer asked me, how are things different since I was last with this program in April? And, and there are a few things first that I want to start with that weren't different. We're still fighting the virus. Our economies and retailers are feeling the pain. And e-commerce continues to grow. So some good, some bad. But there are some things that are very different um, since I was last here in April. The first is this one notion of acceptance. Most of us have now accept we are on this very long roller coaster ride. The second is digital, digitalization, striving radical change, rapid radical changes in shopper journeys. We need to embrace that and get ready for that. And the third is chronic anxiety. Shoppers are afraid and they're shaping unpredictable behaviors. And you'll hear Emmanuel and Gita discuss that following me. So I'm going to refer to this chart, um, and I, I want to touch base on it again because it was the inspiration for the retail roller coaster. In April, we were optimistic there would be a new normal, and we were starting to move into that world of being better at e-commerce, maybe safe, shopping more safely. But honestly, most of us just wanted to get back to our regular place and having fun shopping at the mall. The good news is we've adapted. We've learned new safe shopping behaviors. We've got new technology, and we've all embraced e-commerce in ways that should make the coming months a lot easier for us all in terms of shopping and also in terms of supplier and fulfillment. So let's start with what does it feel like to be a retailer today? Um, most people on this call are not retailers. There are a few. Um, and those of you that are, we know you've had a really challenging year. Um, it's a rocky ride. The safety concerns are forcing all kinds of operational changes. Frugal shoppers are pressuring margins of already fragile retailers. And without a doubt, this is a tipping point for e-commerce which is a good thing if you're an e-tailer or you're ahead of the game on e-commerce, but it's a challenge if you need to catch up. There's also a shift to new digital payment platforms, third parties that enhance the shopping environment, make it easier for shopping, but bring new competitive frameworks and financial structures to the marketplace. So the bottom line, we need to reinvent at every turn. Shopper journeys are being reinvented to um, massive changes. Uh, here are just a few quotes from our ethnographies um, of how the journey is different today than it was before this pandemic. And, and, and you can read them, but I want to touch upon a couple. Um, we live more simply. We want to stay safe and save money. Um, I shop fewer stores to avoid people. I buy from my list and leave. And, and my personal pet peeve right now, online shopping is boring. I just find my item, I check my prices, and I check out. So we're shopping differently because we're not, we have to, but we're not really satisfied. When we take a look at these massive shifts in online behaviors, of course, e-commerce is growing. That's not really a surprise. But when you take a look at, at these charts and they show 2020 weekly sales growth across some leading U.S. retailers. On the left, that top orange line represents Instacart's trends. Instacart is a, a leading tech platform that delivers groceries and other products from traditional retail or brick and mortar retailers to homes. And when we compare their amazing growth, that big orange line, to the little looking flat lines at the bottom, those are the traditional grocery stores. So all the growth in the industry right now is coming from e-commerce and from third party, party tech platforms, creating a challenge for the traditional store. Meanwhile, on the right, these are some top e-commerce players. And you'll notice, by the way, none of them are pure play e-commerce anymore. They're all omnichannel. Um, but you can see that since mid-March, when the pandemic really hit the U.S., they all started to explode. Amazon actually grew the least on a percent basis because its e-commerce business was already so big. But continue to grow, continue to show week-on-week -week gains throughout the last six months. I want to point out, too, on the far right, you see that angle that starts to go up where the data leaves off? That's Amazon Prime Week, Prime Days, two or three days where Amazon drove the world to their website and to everybody else's. 
And so it's interesting to see that Amazon's investment is driving um, shoppers to all their competitors as well. So we're going online, but we're not necessarily happy. Um, in our global trends survey that Simon talked about, um, there's clearly friction with e-commerce. Um, you can see the numbers across every country but China. Shoppers find it more difficult than shopping in traditional stores, and those numbers continue to grow. We dug deeper and thought maybe this is because there are folks who are not used to e-commerce or not used to shopping online um, that are getting engaged and are dissatisfied, but it's really everyone. Um, here's some data from younger shoppers, Generation Z, and you can see they too are dissatisfied. And in fact, in every country except China and Italy, they're more dissatisfied now than they were last year. We could argue that's probably because of fulfillment challenges, but I also think it's because it's pretty boring. So we take a look at who's doing it right, and, and there is no doubt, and this is hot off the presses, um, yesterday was Singles Day in China. That's the day that Alibaba created as the anti-Valentine's Day 10 years ago. That's now the world's largest shopping event. Alibaba talks about this day and the days leading up to it as a mega shopping festival. It, and, and amazing, I mean, shopping traffic online peaked at 583,000 orders in a second, in one second. Nothing's ever been done like that before. $75 million in sales reporting, and they're still counting. And they've been growing plus 30% a year on Singles Day for six years in a row. Take a look at the brands that are a key piece of this. Over 100 brands each generated 15 million in the first 111 minutes of this four-day event. That's those brands included Nike, Adidas, Apple, L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, and more. So lots of exciting things drove the business. Concerts on the left, picture of Katy Perry's concert. Check out the video on YouTube. On the right, the new Air Jordan that's debuting um, that debuted yesterday. So I want to close here with a just. Two more points about technology. Um, fulfillment, and I've used this word a couple of times. Most of us are marketers and market researchers. I urge you all to be somewhat students of fulfillment. Amazing things are happening here. Um, Amazon and Alibaba are lighting the world on fire with robots in their warehouses and for delivering to stores. And on the right, new players are entering the fulfillment space every day. I'm presently mesmerized with the ideas of Magway and Virgin Hyperloop where we can put goods and serve people into tubes and transport them faster than ever before. All in a way that is fast, eco-friendly, and safe in every single sense of the word. So it raises the importance of getting it right across the point of purchase system. And, and thankfully, technology is our friend here too, because we can create virtual environments and test ideas and optimize across the store, at the shelf, on premise, online, and at every channel that matters. So to, to sum it all up, there's some clear foundations for staying on track. This, we need to accept and embrace the roller coaster. We need to understand this new omnichannel shopper. If you don't know your new shopper journey, you need to find out now. Um, reach higher as that digital bar goes up, reach faster, and, and help shoppers get ready to manage their anxiety. So with that, I, I'll turn it back to you, Jennifer.